Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to the series you've been asking for, creating LibGDX multiplayer games using Node.js servers. So in this tutorial series, you're going to learn how to create a multi-platform multiplayer game that will run on your desktop, your iPhone, your Android device, and even your web browsers. So we are going to double up on your education this time and not only teach you how to create a libgdx game using Java, but also how to build a web server from scratch using Node.js. So if you guys are interested in creating real-time multiplayer games, you have definitely come to the right place. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you're familiar with my previous videos, I typically start off by uh, showing you how to install libgdx. We're also in this tutorial going to show you how to uh, download and install Node.js. But if you're already familiar with how to do those two things, you can go ahead and bypass this video. But if you're not already familiar with those things, uh, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and navigate to libgdx.badlogicgames.com. You'll click on the Downloads tab here and click Download Setup App. So once that's done downloading, I want you to go ahead and open up that file and you'll be presented with a screen that looks similar to this. We're going to set up our libgdx game. The name of it will be multi uh, player demo. Uh, we'll set our package to com.brentarelli.multiplayer uh, demo. And then the game class multiplayer demo. Uh, our destination will be a project I already set up inside of my Google Drive here, I think multiplayer demo. And then a path to your Android SDK. Uh, if you don't know how to find that, Google search it. Um, for me, it's users slash Bernarelli slash library slash Android slash SDK. This is typical for Mac users. Um, our projects uh, for this series will include our desktop, Android, iOS, um, and we may as well just keep the HTML here as well. We may do that. Um, I want you to go ahead and keep Box2D uh, checked. Um, and we'll probably maybe use Box2D lights. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll use that only if we need it. So let's just go ahead and click generate here. Uh, you just click yes to any warnings. And go ahead and let that generate the files that we'll need. So once all the files are done uh, setting up, you'll see build successful. You can go ahead and close this, open up your Android Studio. You'll see open an existing Android Studio project. We'll go ahead and navigate to uh, the uh, folder that we just uh, installed it on and double click on that. And then Android Studio will set up uh, your uh, project uh, structure. So once Android Studio is done setting up those files, uh, you should be presented with a screen like this. If you don't have this uh, navigator open, you can click on project on the left side. So we're going to set up our desktop test environment here. Um, so what I want you to do is click up this Android button and click edit configurations. In the top left hand corner, you'll see a plus sign. I want you to click on that and scroll down to application. Uh, at the top, we are going to name this application desktop. In the main class, we are going to select the desktop launcher. Our working directory, we will navigate to the main directory and inside the Androids folder and the assets uh, folder will be our working directory where we get all of our resources from. If you're not sure why this is located in the Android folder, um, you can watch some of my previous tutorials, but basically it's because Android requires that you have it inside the assets folder. Um, so we are going to also set the uh, class path of the module to a desktop here. Click apply and okay. Now I want you to go ahead and click this green arrow up here. Uh, the first time you do this, it will take a little bit. Uh, basically, Android Studio compiles all of our libraries and we're going to run the Hello World uh, in quotation game for LibGDX. And here you have it. We have a red screen that is rendering a texture that is the Bad Logic uh, Games logo. We're done with Android Studio for this part of the tutorial. Uh, so we're just going to close all that out. Um, inside of your web browser, I want you to go to nodejs.org. Um, you can click on the downloads page, but I think it's the same in Windows, but at least you're presented with the newest version right on the home page. 
and you can click uh, on the mature and dependable version or the latest feature uh, stable version. I think we'll go ahead and use the 4.2.3 at the making of this video, um, but you can probably use more mature versions if you watch this video later on. So click and download that. So go ahead and run the installation that you just downloaded. And I'm assuming everybody knows how to install programs on your computer if you're watching this series. So once that's done downloading, I want you to go ahead and open a terminal window if you're in uh, Mac. Uh, otherwise, in Windows, it's your command prompt. Um, I want you to go ahead and type node dash dash version and make sure that you get something back from that. In my case, it's uh, version 4.2.3. So if you didn't see the version number when you uh, typed node uh, dash dash version, then I want you to go ahead and go to Google and figure out the solution to that because I can't troubleshoot uh, everybody's problem in regards to that. It's probably got something to do with the fact that your computer doesn't have the uh, pathway to your Node.js uh, installation. So you're going to have to Google that for yourself. Uh, but other than that, that's the end of this tutorial. Um, and so we got everything set up. So in future tutorials we can get to coding. So I really hope you guys are as excited about this tutorial series as I am in creating it. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank all of my subscribers and followers who have watched my previous videos and uh, have really pushed me into creating this series. I think it's going to be one of the best ones yet. I think I am going to learn something in the process of creating it alongside of you guys as well. Um, so it's going to be a cool journey and I hope you guys stick with me. And finally, I'd just like to thank uh, everybody who supported me on my Patreon campaign. I am giving you two big thumbs up right now. I, it really means a lot to me from the bottom of my heart that my videos have in, uh, encouraged you guys to support. I'm trying to do this full time. It's a work in progress, and you guys have definitely helped make progress towards those goals. I ask if you aren't a uh, supporter of my Patreon campaign and you're watching this tutorial series, if you feel like you're getting something beneficial out of it, check out the Patreon page page, you know, you too could get two big thumbs up. Uh, but either way, I appreciate everybody watching. I will catch you guys in the next video where we're going to start coding. Mm.